The film opens in a dense jungle late at night. A young boy is buried under the mud, breathing through a bamboo stick. His narration, delivered in the deep, seasoned voice of an older man, notes with disgust that he's had to eat stink bugs to survive. The boy claws his way out of the mud, only to be met by the shaman who gazes at him with disapproval for failing the test. Without a word, the shaman reburies the boy. Boy's voiceover expresses a wish that his training involved less dirt. As years pass, we see Boy undergoing rigorous training under the shaman. He learns martial arts, strengthens his body by rolling a heavy statue's head up a steep hill, and hones his skills with various weapons. Some nights, the shaman administers hallucinogenic drugs, causing the boy to confront his deepest fears and traumas in vivid, surreal visions. Throughout his grueling training, a singular purpose drives Boy to kill Hilda van de Kooi the ruthless matriarch of a nameless, despotic city in a post-apocalyptic world. Hilda is directly responsible for the brutal deaths of Boy's family, and his training is solely dedicated to avenging them. Each session with the shaman serves to sharpen the boy's mind and body, preparing him for the inevitable confrontation with Hilda. Boy's voiceover reflects on the brutality and necessity of his training, revealing a growing resolve to complete his mission no matter the cost. As the final stages of his training approach, the boy, now a young man, is ready to leave the jungle and face his destiny. The shaman, having shaped him into a formidable warrior, offers a final piece of wisdom and tells him that revenge is a path you walk alone. But never forget the strength that brought you here. After this, the boy, with the fire of vengeance burning in his eyes, sets out toward the dystopian city ruled by Hilda ready to unleash the skills he has honed through years of hardship and discipline. In flashbacks, Boy narrates his one simple life, despite his mother's eccentricities, like her meticulous cleaning of guns, signaling her involvement in the resistance against the regime. He recalls with sorrow that he can no longer remember his own voice, so he adopts the voiceover of his favorite video game character to articulate his inner thoughts. Boy and his younger sister, Mina, were inseparable, sharing an unbreakable bond. They spent their days playing games and dreaming of escape. Mina once showed him a detailed plan to rob a bank and flee the city, embodying their shared hope for freedom. One day while exploring, they stumbled upon a statue of Hilda. In a rebellious gesture, Mina raised her hand, symbolically giving Hilda the finger with all her fingers extended. Boy joined her, a small act of defiance that cemented their solidarity against the tyrant. However, their fleeting moments of joy were shattered when the regime came for them. Selected for the yearly culling, where 12 dissidents were publicly executed to suppress resistance and entertain the brainwashed people, Boy's life descended into a nightmare. He witnessed the horror of Hilda personally shooting his mother and sister. Against all odds, Boy survived though the trauma left him scarred and resolute in his quest for vengeance. Years later, transformed by relentless training under the shaman, Boy has pushed his body and mind to the limit. He feels ready for his mission, nearly beating the shaman in combat. However, a hallucination of Mina appears during their fight, causing him to falter and lose. The shaman, shaking his head, tells Boy he is not yet ready hinting that the final hurdle lies not in physical prowess, but in overcoming his inner demons. One day, Boy and the Shaman head into the city to sell produce. As they navigate the crowded streets, Boy notices a cute flower girl who gives him a flower with a bright smile. For a fleeting moment, Boy ponders the possibility of a life beyond his mission. However, this thought is shattered when the flower girl expresses her admiration for the Van de Kooi family and her excitement for the culling. Boy's hope is replaced by disgust, and he crumples the flower in his hand. Suddenly, regime soldiers arrive, causing a stir in the market. The shaman quickly pulls Boy around a corner, urging him to watch discreetly. From one of the cars, Glenn Van de Kooi steps out. He is the husband of Melanie Van de Kooi and the brother-in-law to Gideon Van de Kooi. They have come to select the 12 dissidents for the public executions. Glenn begins to read a speech written by Gideon, but interrupts himself multiple times, complaining about its poor quality and irrelevant references to owls, an animal no one in the city has seen. The crowd grows restless, 
and a woman angrily calls him a coward. In a fit of rage, Glenn pulls out a gun and dares her to repeat the insult. When she does, he fires but misses, killing someone else instead. This act of violence incites the crowd who attempt to retaliate. The soldiers, led by the head enforcer June 27th, brutally suppress the uprising, leaving only six people remaining for the culling. Glenn orders these survivors to be rounded up. Despite the shaman's insistence that he is not ready, Boy's rage compels him to act. He defies the shaman, eventually managing to hide in the trunk of Glenn's car. At a warehouse, Gideon Van de Koy furiously confronts Glenn for causing a massacre and failing to secure the 12 people needed for the culling. Glenn tries to deflect the blame, claiming he will smooth things over with Melanie. When Melanie arrives, Glenn immediately throws Gideon under the bus, blaming the poorly written speech. Melanie chastises them both, but instructs Glenn to prepare for the ceremony. She orders Gideon to find six more people by any means necessary to meet the quota. Meanwhile, Boy stealthily exits the trunk of the car and begins to navigate the warehouse. However, his hallucinations of Mina persist and he finds himself speaking to her in his thoughts, reminding himself to stay quiet. Distracted by these visions, Boy inadvertently steps into the open where Glenn spots him and sends soldiers to catch him. Drawing on his rigorous training, Boy engages the soldiers in combat, utilizing hand-to-hand -hand techniques, knives, and even their own firearms against them. Amidst the chaos, he encounters Basho, a chained prisoner who offers to help kill Hilda in exchange for his freedom. Boy frees Basho, realizing for the first time that he has a potential ally. Together, Boy and Basho fight off the remaining soldiers. Boy showcases his combat prowess while Basho strategically hides behind a cart, avoiding gunfire. Once all the soldiers are killed by Boy, Glenn attempts to flee, but is quickly captured by the duo. During the interrogation, Glenn reveals that Hilda hosts a lavish party at her mansion every year before the culling and offers to help them sneak in. However, in a moment of impulsive aggression, Basho drops a heavy vice onto Glenn's head, crushing it. Boy gets furious, arguing that Glenn might have genuinely helped them, while Basho defensively asserts that Glenn was untrustworthy and likely to betray them. Escaping the warehouse, Basho leads Boy to the secret location of the Resistance, only to find it deserted. Entering cautiously, Boy is suddenly held at gunpoint by Benny, who quickly relaxes upon recognizing Basho. The two men embrace, and Basho asks Benny what happened to everyone else. As Benny speaks, Boy realizes that he is speaking in another language, making his words incomprehensible. Boy humorously interprets Benny's explanations through exaggerated and nonsensical imagery in his mind. Despite the language barrier, it becomes evident to Boy that Benny is explaining how the regime attacked and killed nearly all of the resistance members, leaving Benny as one of the few survivors. Basho, visibly shaken, inquires about a woman, presumably his lover, only to learn she had been killed in the assault. Overcome with grief, Basho breaks down, and Boy, piecing together the situation from the context and body language, reaches out to comfort him. Fueled by rage and a newfound sense of purpose, Basho declares that they will retaliate and take advantage of their knowledge of Hilda's whereabouts that night. Benny and Basho then sit Boy down to explain their plan. However, with Benny speaking in a language Boy cannot understand, the details are lost on him. During this, the thought of Mina appears beside Boy, advising him to simply nod and go along with the plan. They drive to Hilda's mansion, knocking out a few guards and a chef along the way. Boy is given the chef's uniform to blend in and infiltrate the party. Once inside, carrying a cake, Boy is momentarily distracted by a tray of macaroons. Basho, noticing Boy's distraction, tries to steer him back on the track. Entering the kitchen, Boy discards the chef uniform. The other kitchen staff, who are all skilled fighters, notice and arm themselves with knives. A brutal fight ensues, with Boy using a cheese grater to gruesomely wound his opponents before switching to a butcher's cleaver. Emerging from the kitchen into the dining hall, Boy stealthily slits the throat of a guard before making his way to the head of the table where Hilda sits. With a swift and decisive motion, he decapitates her, seemingly achieving his long-sought vengeance. But the victory is short-lived. Boy's hallucinations of Mina intensify, clouding his sense of reality. 
the headless body of Hilda suddenly rises, revealing it to be a decoy. The real Hilda steps out from the shadows, flanked by heavily armed guards. She mockingly congratulates Boy on his futile attempt, revealing she had anticipated his move all along. Boy, now surrounded and with his hallucinations blurring his perception, braces himself for the final confrontation. Basho and Benny, seeing Boy's dire situation, spring into action, determined to help him complete his mission and bring down Hilda once and for all. The people at the table scream in terror. Boy grabs the head and realizes it isn't Hilda. Suddenly, he is surrounded by guards and Gideon. Gideon explains he expected someone would try to kill Hilda, so he set up this trap with actors to catch resistance members. Boy wants to fight, but is outnumbered and outgunned. After this, Gideon retreats, letting June 27th handle the situation. Boy and June 27th start fighting, exchanging blows. Boy begins to gain the upper hand and even manages to pull off her helmet. When Boy looks at her, he unexpectedly pauses. This gives June 27th a chance to push him over the railing and knock him out. His last thought is how he failed his mission. Unconscious, he dreams of the past, his mother and sister's execution, the regime cutting out his tongue and being hung from a tree. He remembers the shaman saving him and taking him to the jungle to train for revenge. Boy wakes up tied to a chair. June 27th punches him, demanding he give up the shaman. Boy mouths, screw you, and she throws an axe at his head. During this, Gideon steps in, saying torture gives him nosebleeds and he'll handle it. Gideon tells Boy that Hilda is now a paranoid wreck, hiding in a bunker and ordering yearly executions. Gideon says their system has already won, but Hilda can't see it, and he is tired of the violence. Gideon pleads with Boy to cooperate, but Boy refuses. After this, Gideon respects his defiance and orders him to be taken for this year's show. At the studio, Melanie scolds Boy for prematurely killing Glenn, as they had planned to use him as a show host. Now she intends to make an example of him, subjecting him to a special punishment. Chained up and fitted with a shock collar, Boy becomes a captive audience as the broadcast begins. Hilda takes the stage, with Melanie desperately trying to rein in her erratic behavior. Despite initial composure, Hilda's paranoia kicks in when she spots a shadow in the audience, which she believes to be the shaman. Straying from the script, she brandishes a gun, causing chaos until Melanie intervenes. Now Boy realizes he must break free. Recalling a secret gift from Gideon, he stealthily cuts through his restraints. But before he can intervene, Melanie activates his shock collar, immobilizing him. Cornered by assailants, Boy's fate seems sealed until unexpected allies emerge. Basho, disguised as one of the demonic elves, turns the tide of the battle. Benny also joins the fray, though Boy struggles to grasp their intricate plan. Empowered by a unique weapon from Benny, Boy fights back with newfound ferocity, dispatching enemies with each punch. Meanwhile, in the control room, Tensions escalate as Melanie's meticulously orchestrated show descends into chaos. While she fumes over the disruption, Gideon walks away, resigned to his role in the unraveling of events. Meanwhile, Boy engages in a fierce battle with a serial pirate mascot, using up his ammunition in the process. Quick thinking from Benny saves Boy from a fatal shot, but Benny himself takes the hit, sacrificing his life to protect his friend. With Benny's dying breath, his words once again sound like incomprehensible noise to Boy. Basho, too, falls victim to the gunfire. As Melanie approaches, Boy is thrust into action, using a pineapple mascot as a shield to subdue her. He binds her to a chair as Boy exacts his revenge. With a swift, brutal maneuver, Boy ends Melanie's life, leaving her a bloody, broken mess on the stage. Determined to fulfill his promise to Basho, Boy presses forward, cutting through a swarm of guards with ruthless efficiency. But as he looks back, Basho lies motionless, succumbing to his wounds. Encountering Gideon, Boy faces a pivotal decision. Despite Mina's apparition pleading for mercy, Boy delivers a fatal blow, unwilling to show leniency to his former benefactor. 
Armed with a key card provided by Gideon, Boy proceeds towards his final confrontation with Hilda. In a tense exchange, Hilda warns Boy of the imminent danger awaiting him. But Boy remains resolute. He reveals a drawing from Mina as a symbol of hope before facing his adversaries head on. Entering Hilda's opulent sanctuary, Boy is confronted with a shocking revelation as he gazes upon a portrait. He realizes that Hilda, the target of his vengeance, is none other than his own mother. Approaching Boy with tears streaming down her face, Hilda pleads for forgiveness, acknowledging the pain he endured under the shaman. She implores him to recognize her, to show any sign that he still holds a connection to his past. In a sudden rush of clarity, Boy's memories come flooding back. He recalls the harrowing events of that fateful day at the execution, realizing his role not as a bystander, but as a willing participant in the tragedy. With mounting horror, he remembers how Hilda manipulated him into committing unspeakable acts of violence, coercing him to take innocent lives at her command. As the truth unfolds, Boy is overcome with guilt and remorse. He remembers the shaman's cruel punishment, the brutal methods used to erase his memories and reshape his reality. The revelation shakes him to his core, shattering the illusion of his identity and the innocence of his past. Moreover, learning that June 27th is in fact his long-lost sister Mina, believed to be dead, further confuses him. Desperate for any sign of recognition from her son, Hilda pleads with Boy, but he remains too stunned to respond. Seeing him as a threat, she commands June 27th to eliminate him, convinced that her brother is lost to her forever. With a moment of hesitation, Mina recalls their shared bond from their past encounter at the statue. Ignoring her mother's orders, Mina turns on Hilda, ending her reign of terror with a decisive blow to the forehead. Taking cover, Boy and Mina arm themselves and fight their way through the compound, facing off against heavily armed guards. As they make their escape, Mina reveals the truth about Hilda's misguided actions, driven by her unwavering belief in Boy's survival. Their reunion is short-lived as they encounter the shaman, who insists that their mission is far from over. Despite their valiant efforts, the shaman proves to be a formidable opponent, inflicting grievous injuries upon them both. In a moment of clarity, Boy confronts the shaman, recognizing the sins committed in pursuit of vengeance. Summoning the strength of his younger self, he delivers a decisive blow, ending the shaman's reign of terror once and for all. Bruised and battered, Boy refuses to abandon his sister, vowing to protect her and escape the oppressive city. With the Koi family's power shattered, they embark on a journey toward freedom, hopeful for a future of peace and redemption. With a simple yet powerful declaration, Boy promises to stand by his sister's side, now and always.